the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Good morning. We gather together to celebrate a great thing, great solemnity, a great celebration that God is family, that God is not solitary, singular. God is a trinity of love, relationship, and he invites us to enter in and to participate in that. And so we have a God who wishes to include us in his family life, the family life of heaven. Let's begin this Mass asking God to forgive us for things that make us unworthy, things that separate us from the family of God, the Church, and from one another, and from God. Let us ask his mercy and forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Mm. by sending into the world the word of truth and the spirit of sanctification, made known to the human race your wondrous mystery. Grant us, we pray, that in professing the true faith, we may acknowledge the trinity of eternal glory and adore your unity powerful in majesty, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said to the people, Ask now of the days of old, before your time, ever since God created man upon the earth, ask from one end of the sky to the other, did anything so great ever happen before? Was it ever heard of? Did a people ever hear the voice of God speaking from the midst of fire as you did and live? Or did any God venture to go and take a nation for himself from the midst of another nation by testings, by signs and wonders, by war, with strong hands and outstretched arms and by great terrors, all of which the Lord your God did for you in Egypt before your very eyes? This is why you must now know and fix in your heart that the Lord is God in the heavens above and on earth below and that there is no other. You must keep his statutes and commandments that I enjoin on you today, that you and your children after you may prosper, and that you may have a long life on the land which the Lord your God is giving you forever. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, those who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you received a spirit of adoption through whom we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ if only we suffer with him, so that we may also be glorified with him. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. The eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had ordered them. When they all saw him, they worshipped. But they doubted. Then Jesus approached and said to them, All power in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always until the end of the age. The Gospel of the Lord. Did anything so great ever happen before? Was it ever heard of? Has anything this great ever happened before in Stockton? Right here in this parking lot? Where's everybody? <laughs> Moses in this first reading from Deuteronomy is really excited about something. He's saying, wow. Think of it. Check it out. Ask around. What have, Has anything ever happened like this before? Is any other religion, any other God, like our God, who, and then he goes on in this reading, you know, to say, you know, what uh, God has done, that he, he came down from heaven, that he, uh, um, he, uh, he says, ask around. He's talking to the people uh, there in Sinai in the desert. Ask. Ask now and of the days of old, before your time, ever since God created man upon the earth, ask from one end of the sky to the other. Did anything so great ever happen before? Was it ever heard of? Did a people ever hear the voice of God speaking in the midst of fire as you did and live? 
Is there any other religion where God came down and, and, uh, and appeared in a, in a burning bush? Or that he came down on a mountain and gave ten commandments and spoke to the people so that they heard his voice? Has there ever been a religion, ever been a, any other religion that's like our religion? So this is the question, you know, and so um, uh, we have to ask ourselves, and Moses tells us to ask ourselves. And, um, and then in the gospel we just heard, Jesus, you know, says, um, Behold, I am with you always until the end of the world. You know, our religion is so amazing. God came down from his starry throne and became a squishy little baby born uh, among us in a poor manger to live with us. And uh, God shared our human nature so that we could, you know, become part of God's family, share in his nature, be like God. This is, you know, truth is stranger than fiction. This stuff is, uh, have you ever, has anybody ever heard of something like this? So this is the kind of thing, so we've got to wrap our minds around our Catholic Christian religion and get excited and then go out and bring a friend next Sunday. Right? Okay. So because this is amazing, we have to ask ourselves. You know, what do we really, do we really believe these mysteries that God, you know, is so close to us? That's Moses' point. God is so close to us. Has there already been a, been a religion where God is so close, where he actually speaks to us, where he actually comes down? The word of God, you know, inscribed on tablets of stone, or the word of God coming and making himself flesh in the womb of a virgin. God becoming a squishy baby. Or the word of God, God himself, his word, you know, coming down and being on the altar in the form of bread and wine so he could be, you know, with us and within us. You know, have you ever heard of a religion like that? This is our religion. So we need to be excited, teach our young people, teach our neighbors and friends, go out there and, I don't know, stand on the street corner in the mall. Uh, is the mall open? Uh, anyway, we, to go out at least with our coworkers and neighbors and family members, you know, to try to, or to get ourselves excited at least, right? Uh, that God wants to include us. Inclusion. God wants to uh, have a relationship with us. He didn't just stay up in heaven, you know, in a trinity. Uh, uh, you know, God could have stayed in his, God from all eternity, you know, we, today we celebrate the Trinity. The God is not singular, he's not isolated, he's not solitary. He's not one person. From all eternity, God has existed, and before he created the, the stars and the universe and, the, and human life, before he created something to love, there was the only love within himself, and so of course he had to be more than one. How could there be love if it's just one? So it makes sense. There's logic to it. It makes us rational. We, can, we can't understand the Trinity, but we can, it, it's sensible. And it goes with our reason. It's reasonable. So we try to realize, you know, of course God has to be more than one person. It has to be a... a, a, a and, and if God has created us, you know, family, you know, two that get married and then they become three, or in the image of God, you know, uh, it makes sense. God is a trinity. God is a family of love. And uh, God wants to, because uh, God is relationship. God is communion, communio in Latin. He's communion. He's, uh, uh, and so we are created in his image, in the image of God. We, uh, um, uh, God is not kind of a, a, a closed circuit. Like, you know, just loves between, uh, among himself. You know, the father loves the son so much that their love is so intense that it becomes a third person. That's what we know and we believe, you know, but God, you know, and when we go to heaven, it's not going to be a spectator sport where we just watch it and say, wow, look at the Trinity. Look at the circulation. Look at the family love that's in the Trinity. No, God wants to include us. Have you ever heard of a religion where God wants to adopt us? God creates us in his image. We are his children. He created us in such a way that we're capable of, of God. Kapax Dei in Latin. Capable of God. We're, in fact, we're made for that. We're made to be part of that Trinity life. It's like God looked at himself. He said, uh, well, look, I'm, I'm, I'm a Trinity. I am Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And now if I want to create something, someone to love outside of myself, outside of God, 
I think I'll create them in, in, in my image. So he created us in God's image, Abel, and he made us able to be adopted. And uh, the Holy Spirit is that, you know, so we're made in such a way that the Holy Spirit is like the key that fits the lock. The Holy Spirit is what we need. Without the Holy Spirit, I spoke about it last week, life is absurd. People don't know what they're made for. They don't know why they exist if they don't have the spirit of adoption that enables us to call out Abba, Daddy, Father, and to realize I'm a child of God and, and to have that hope that in heaven I'm going to be God, like God, right? By, by grace, we're going to be sharing God's nature. He shared our human nature so we could share in God's nature. Can you tell I'm excited about this? I, I read a book recently called Divinization and Grace, Deification. God, the fathers of the church spoke about it a lot, it's kind of been forgotten, that in the Bible it talks about how we'll be like God, 1 John chapter First John chapter 3, that we're in heaven, it's going to be more than just being children of God, we're going to be like God, we'll see him and become like him. What a mystery, what a, what a, a good news, right, that we should share. Um, and so Moses got excited. Father Mark's trying to get excited, and we are uh, we're amazed at this God that we have. <coughs> and this explains a lot. <coughs> it explains a lot about how we are. You know, we realize that if we're alone, we're immature. The stages of maturity are independent. That's good. That's better than being dependent, right? Dependent means you're a little baby and you need help or a little child. You always need but you become independent, that's good, that's better. But that's not the highest form of maturity. Interdependence, when you can create a committee and a, or, a, or a, 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 a nonprofit organization and work with others to do something even greater. Interdependence is the highest form of maturity. We are not mature until we become communio, become communion, relationship. Now this is what we're... And if you can't handle that, you become a, a lonely, isolated person, and uh, it explains a lot. You know, addiction, they say addiction, the 12-step programs say that addiction is isolation. It's people who can't stand, you know, they turn a switch and they say no, they shut people out, they, 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 they don't include others in their lives, and they've gotten angry and resentful, and so they isolate themselves, and then they look for soothing and comfort in um, alcohol or drugs or porn or food. Right? People get addicted to stuff, to things, but people, relationship. And so the healing comes, the maturity comes when we are in relationship again with others and with God. So that's the way, you know, the addict says, I need help. I need to be with others and to uh, not be isolated anymore. And so this is our faith and this is the joy that we share that we gather to celebrate today and we uh, realize that uh, it's amazing and I'll just conclude with St. Paul one of my favorite passages this second reading from Romans <laughs> where St. Paul is so excited he's saying you know if we have the Holy Spirit of adoption that little phrase that explains everything spirit of adoption Trinity our inclusion Jesus the only Son of God but there's hope for us because there's a Holy Spirit of adoption that draws us in to that family life. And so St. Paul says it. And, and if we're sons and daughters of the Father, then we're heirs. There's only one inheritance. We, the church, the body of Christ, we're going to get the throne at the right hand of the Father with Jesus in Christ, one body, children, sons and daughters of, uh, of God in our Lord Jesus. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ. Let's stand and pray as we do every Sunday our creed, which is divided in three parts, professing our faith in God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. 
I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In the Holy Spirit, we are adopted as children of God to call him Abba, Daddy. With confidence, let us present our prayers and deeds to our Heavenly Father. For Christian churches, that they will be one in the unifying love of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And for those who do not believe, that they will be drawn to the faith by the example of Christians. We pray to the Lord. For young people, that they will have the courage and commitment to answer God's call to become priests, deacons, and religious. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For civil authorities, that they will intensify their efforts to establish peace and justice throughout the world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us gathered here, that we will reflect the most holy trinity's life-giving vitality living as true stewards who celebrate God's presence, care for God's creation, and serve others. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the homeless and the hungry, the sick and the dying, including COVID-19 victims, that they will be remembered and ministered to as children of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, including Walt Nichols, may they rejoice forever in heaven with our triune God. We also pray for the San Jose shooting victims, COVID-19 victims, and those who died in our country's service, that they will be remembered with respect and Gratitude, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving Father, hear the prayers of your children, which we offer in the name of Jesus, our brother, our Lord, who died for us, but rose again and lives forever and ever. Amen.
Once again, our Lord wishes to come down and be with us and within us in this Eucharist. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice and the Praise the Lord of his Grant your church, O Lord, we pray. Sanctify, Lord, by the invocation of your name, this oblation of our service, and by it make of us an eternal offering to you through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for with your only begotten Son and the Holy Spirit, you are one God, one Lord, not in the unity of a single person, but in a trinity of one substance. For what you have revealed to us of your glory, we believe equally of your Son and of the Holy Spirit, so that in, con in the confessing of the true and eternal Godhead, you might be adored in what is proper to each person, their unity in substance, and their equality in majesty. For this is praised by angels and archangels, cherubim too and seraphim, who never cease to cry out each day as with one voice they acclaim. Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you. By the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, 
and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim, by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make up, make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Myron, our Bishop, and all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned here before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There, we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, 
we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your
communion antiphon. Since you are children of God, God has sent into your hearts the spirit of his Son, the spirit who cries out, Abba, Father. Let us pray. May receiving this sacrament, O Lord our God, bring us health of body and soul as we confess your eternal holy trinity and undivided unity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for our announcements. It's the end of the month, the month of May, the month of Mary, and uh, tomorrow is the Feast of the Visitation, a special feast of Our Lady, if you'd like to come to the daily Mass. Um, we um, also know that this is the last Sunday of the month, and uh, it's the fifth Sunday this month. It's, there's five Sundays this month, and so whenever there's a fifth Sunday, we have a fifth Sunday collection, and it's for the poor and the needy, for those who have uh, emergency financial situations, uh, they can apply to get a, a special uh, a loan, or, or not a loan, but a uh, financial help. So um, we have a wonderful committee called the uh, um, Fifth Sunday Ministry, and they make a wonderful, they have a wonderful job of uh, discerning who's truly needy. So um, please be generous in our second offering today. The baskets are at the uh, exits. and. Uh, um, to help us in this ministry. Next Sunday there will be a second collection for uh, the Pope. For Pete, it's called Peter's Pence. It's a fund that he has for uh, helping emergency situations throughout the world. Um, so this is, so next week is the first uh, week of the month of June, the month of the Sacred Heart, and, and uh, you know that Jesus, you know, God is close to us. He appeared to St. Margaret Mary in 1675 to a nun in France. And he promised salvation to those who received communion on the nine first Fridays. And then Our Lady of Fatima appeared and said that uh, she can beat that she had only five first Saturdays. So uh, anyway, it's a wonderful devotion. Uh, but you're supposed to go to confession a week before, a week after. And so I'm going to hear confessions now after Mass in the corner over here. I've got two comfy chairs, uh, and uh, or three chairs, one behind the screen or face to face. Either way, you can choose. Uh, but people like to go to confession so that they can take communion on the first Saturday, first um, um, Friday, uh, in order. And we have a little flyer, a little pamphlet here that's very well made. It kind of has a check to do the five first Saturdays, which is the easiest one, and it just has a place to fill in and to record, and it's, it has a wonderful explanation. So you take one of those pamphlets to learn about this wonderful devotion that Our Lady uh, gave to us when she appeared at Fatima. So you can take one of those. Uh, also, the parish office will be closed tomorrow because of Memorial Day. We certainly thank and we ask God to bless those who have died serving our country and uh, uh, defending our freedom in the world. And so God bless them. May they rest in peace and be blessed for their valor and their courage uh, in serving and dying for, uh, for, our, uh, for our nation. And so um, we pray for them tomorrow especially. We also have some uh, wonderful um, adult education uh, opportunities to learn about your faith. You can come to a Bible study. I'm teaching about the Gospel of Mark. We're going to cancel the class tomorrow, but then for the following two Mondays, we'll have a class to uh, learn about the Gospel of Mark. So there's information on the bulletin about that from 7 to 8 in the Guadalupe Hall. And then on Wednesdays, Father Joe Maganet has a continuing series on spirituality how to live the will of God on earth as it is in heaven, according to the saints and mystics. 
So please uh, uh, see the bulletin for information about that as well. We thank you for your patience in wearing masks and uh, uh, keeping distancing. Uh, even though it's loosening up uh, elsewhere, we nevertheless want people to feel comfortable. So we appreciate uh, your uh, cooperation as we uh, try to get as many people. So, so next Sunday, bring a friend, because next Sunday is Corpus Christi, the Feast of the Body and Blood of Christ. And so it's a wonderful celebration of the Catholics. We'll try to make this Mass very special with uh, uh, a benediction uh, after Mass uh, next Sunday. So uh, we will celebrate truly the, the Body and Blood of Christ, this great gift that God is with us, so close to his people. Let us stand and ask for God's blessing. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God.